Hi, I'm Gimli Goins, and I'm. You're listening to Bring Me Your Torch with Jesse and Elaine, because I brought my axe. Welcome to another episode of Bring Me Your Torch. I'm Jesse. And I'm Elaine. And Elaine, last weekend you were texting me, Ron was texting me. Lots of interesting stuff about your weekend activities. You want to tell our listeners a little bit about what you got up to last weekend? So do you know what South by Southwest is? Um, it's it's a weather pattern. It's a when the wind is going. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like a freaking it's, it's, it used to be like a music festival, isn't it? Just like a pop culture festival now. Well, it's kind of tech in the beginning, in the first weekend, and then it's the music, film, and then music, all kind of combined with a bunch of events going on all around Austin, Texas, mostly downtown, but. Uh, it's a great time. And so the last weekend is the music weekend. And I went to Rachel Ray's event, which was on Saturday. Was on well known for her Saint, music, of course. St. Patrick's Day, <laughs> which I don't know if you did anything for St. Patrick's oh, yeah. Day, but I got to see Salt and Peppa. And I also got to see Dr. Pepper's Jaded Hearts Club Band, which is a cover band for the Beatles. Guys who are in it are the biggest rock stars in the world. We have Matt <laughs> Bellamy, who's the lead singer of Muse, is in it. You have Jet. The lead singer of Jet is in it. He's the lead singer of that band. The drummer for Nine Inch Nails is in it. There's a bunch of big names in it. Wait, is, so, Jet a, is Jet a Paul McCartney cover band? Because Paul McCartney does have a band song named Jet. Does he really? yeah. That's great. Um, how ironic. So we saw that and that, I mean, you can't, you kind of have to go home after you see that band because they're just just ugh, oozing sex ugh. appeal these guys they come out on stage dressed in black leather jackets you know they're trying to be the beatles and they're singing the you know the best songs of the beatles because you love the beatles right yeah i You're was just telling i was just telling some today i was on a beatles walking tour in london god almost two decades ago it's been a while wow that sounds amazing. That was, this wasn't what I was talking about, though. I was... No, it wasn't, actually. Yeah. But that was the highlight of my weekend. But I will say on Sunday, I stood in line for an hour and a half and auditioned to be on Big Brother 20, season 20. Hour and a half. It's not that bad, either. I would have thought it would have been a lot longer. No, not yeah, no, no. it wasn't bad. When you stand in line for South by Southwest for two, three hours to get into an event, um, yeah, an hour isn't too bad. But Elena and Mark were both there, so I got to meet them, and you can see the photos on our Instagram and, and Mark Twitter. And Mark, he was a giant Facebook. bodybuilder guy, but you know, really nice guy. Yeah, he did both really nice. He is really sweet and kind of timid, just like you see on, on TV. Elena, I didn't realize she was as like fun and outgoing and crazy as she sure, was. Sure, two from those house. pictures, huh? You're like a giant next to her. She was, I mean, I'm a giant next to anyone. <laughs> I got long stems, baby. Long getaway um, sticks. They're both very nice, and they're both a lot of fun to hang out with. And so what's what's the scene afterwards? Does everybody you tried out go to a bar afterwards? You told me you were playing ping pong with them. So it's the exact same place it was two years ago when we met James. And it's a bar. It's called Parlor and Yard. It's on East, or sorry, West Sixth Street. And the backyard of this bar actually looks like the Big Brother house. It has like the, the grass, the, like the fake grass, and there's mm. games in the back. It was so hot out. Everyone wanted to stay inside, but I was like, guys, let's go sit outside and play ping pong and do all this fun stuff. And so we kind of just migrated out back. And you know, Elena and Mark have their posse with them. They had their friends, and then we had our friends, and then the Big Brother fans. So it was just one big party. And, of course, you brought up the fact that you have a podcast yes. these guys, right? Oh, it's weird, though, because Elena has, like, a really, really good memory. I mean, how could you forget my my name? Because my name is the same as hers. I've tried to forget. It just uh -huh. doesn't work. But she literally remembered everybody's name around her. I'm like, dude, what's up with your memory? And so, like, an hour goes by, and she's like, yeah, I know you had a podcast. And I'm just like, what? And I'm like, you're coming on it, right? She's like, yes, of course. So I think in June she'll come on the podcast. We'll see. We're going to get James on our podcast. That never happened. So we're going to make it happen. You have to when... remember, Elena was, a, I think, a communications major. Oh, and okay. that's so her thing. I think leading up to the new season or maybe after the new season comes out, we can have her on, maybe ask her about the the, you know, the new cast and what she thinks. Oh, about she'll the, love to come on. Oh, she'll bang. She's a dramatic girl that likes to talk. So we get along very well. Yeah. Well, I'm, you know, on my St. Patrick's Day, I'm 
I'm like an old soul these days. I can't be bothered going out, but I, I went out early. We were out at, I mean, early for me. I went out at 4.30, and we didn't get back till about 2 a, 2.30 a.m., so it was what? for me a long night. That's yeah. really long. Yeah, I, I, you know, I usually can't deal, but for most of the night, I'm in that rare zone where everybody's like just extremely happy. Like you've had just enough alcohol in you so that you're not pissy. You know, you're not, you're happy you're not bored. You're not you're super angry happy. people there, yet. There was one point where I was like, if I have one more drink, it is like good night and good luck for Jesse. It's not going to happen. So I just went and sat in my car for like half an hour and then everybody came out and I was good to go. We went to the next bar and it was fine. So and I had you fun. And then I woke up and I had, no, I, no, I was actually charging my phone because it was dead. <laughs> but, and we, we randomly met, you know, I, I tell you, I go to trivia every week. We, we actually won tonight and we actually happened to randomly meet up with a whole bunch of people that work at the restaurant where the trivia was. So it was fun. Lots of fun happened. But onto some reality shows now. So we have some stuff coming up. Elaine, on a scale of one to ten, where ten is like, oh my god, I'm super excited, I can't wait, <laughs> and one is, I just don't give a crap. Uh, how do you feel about the reunion show for Jersey Shore? It's coming back in, in like a week and a half or so. You know what? I'm kind of at a five, which is so weird because I usually have very strong opinions about everything in this world. But yeah, I could take it or leave it. So I'm going to go with five. And How about you? I think it's, it's going to depend. I think you're right. I think cause that's tentative. We don't know what to expect. Is this going to be like that, that that sensation that we all were so happy to see when it first came out? Or is this going to be like the last season where we just don't care anymore? Uh, you know, a lot of them are married now. They have children. Or they're not going to be on the show. Although Sammy, uh, Sammy's not going to be on, right? Sammy's not going to be back, no. Um, is I, Dina back stuff. on? Dina? I, I think Dina is, but don't hold me to that. Um, I, I, I think know one Vinny is. is. I'm like, is Hot Dog going to be back? I'm like, wait, no, she's party down south. <laughs> Can't keep track after a while. <laughs> Hot Dog. Oh, my God. That was great. Well, I, speaking of party down south, I saw Murray. I had posted a picture about his kid asking me about about a pretzel and and daddy <laughs> being in the pretzel. And he's like, I couldn't explain to him what daddy getting hot dog in the pretzel, man. You know? Oh my gosh. So yeah, so I I think it's gonna really we're gonna watch the first episode and decide like is this something that we like covering and like watching? So it's just gonna be four episodes. Good? I don't know. It's it's already been been uh, picked up for a second season. It hasn't even aired yet. So I don't know how many episodes it is. That's something we should probably know, but. Well, we don't ever do our research, and I don't have my phone right now. I don't know what happened to it. Oh, no. I think I left it so, at work. No, so that's coming. I think it's like April fourth is when that yeah. premieres. So you know, we'll be watching that in a week or so. That and is the day after Spotify goes public on the New York or the Nasdaq. I'm excited about it. Oh my God! I I just get my music from other places. I don't need to get it through Spotify. Spotify's awesome. Go get some Spotify <laughs> stock on April third, or is it fourth? April 3rd. You're the one talking. I don't know. So uh, another show that's coming out, I'm actually kind of excited for. Uh, we've heard about it, its English counterpart uh, on this season of The Challenge. So X on the Beach is coming to America. It's going to uh, premiere on April 19th. And I looked at a, at a you know, brief synopsis what is of it. It says X on the Beach. Um, some, of, some of the folks from The Challenge that we don't know who they were when they first came on were on X of the Beach. Oh, okay. Like, I think maybe, maybe Kaylee was. I can't keep So it's track. like a British thing or a Euro <clears throat> yes, but, European? But, but the, they're making – it was like a, you know MTV Europe or MTV England or whatever, and now it's going to be in here in America. And it says, reality stars appear alongside everyday singles who show up for what they think is a run-of-the-mill love and dating show in paradise, only to <laughs> be completely blindsided by their exes, Ooh. and in some case multiple, face-to-face. -face. A complicated web of hookups, deceit, revenge, and drama unfolds against the sultry backdrop – as couples decide if their love can be reignited or if the flame of romance is gone for good. Now, this is being hosted by Romeo, who is on The oh, Challenge yeah. versus The Stars. But look at the cast. So, Paulie from Big Brother, you know, Cody's brother, he's going to be on it. Faith, who slept with Jax, you know, and caused the whole problem with, with Brittany, she's going to be on it. Corey from The Challenge, who we always make fun of as being stupid, he's going to be on it. Um, a couple people from Bachelor in Paradise, what? The Bachelorette, Bad Girls Club, Are You the One? So a lot of all these like other celebrities. Now, it sounds like what's going to happen is that they're getting – MTV is getting all these people from other celebrity or other reality shows on this show. Wow. And then they're going to filter – then they're going to filter them into the challenge. I've heard that there may be four other people from, from Big Brother Jeez, on next season of the challenge. Jeez, very incestuous. I bet Mark can get on one of these shows. Mark and Elena should end up on this. And there's also just like regular people. I don't know who they are on this Which show. Which is always so good. Whatever. Yeah, but I, it'll be interesting to see if Faith discusses – 
you know, what happened with Jax or whether they bring up the Vanderpump stuff or whether they just pretend it never happened because, I mean, that's a that's a big part of this season of Vanderpump. Is she that right? relevant she, for her she, to be on this show, though, on MTV? I, who knows, you know? Uh, I, I, part of me doesn't remember her being, like, this big drama queen, but maybe she is. I don't know. I'll have to wait and see. The other thing I wanted to just bring up very quickly is Big Brother Canada is back. And I you know love this show. That, but it is, so it, it's really interesting that this show was canceled. What do you mean canceled? And I guess Fan, Fan Outcry brought it back. But you can tell they've had to like cut some corners or, or at least make some deals. So they have like a – I think it's Milton Bradley or a Hasbro game of the week. So to be like, hey, guys, Big Brother is letting us play Twister. And it's obviously product placement for the games, you know. Or hey, I'm the I'm the head of household. I get to order something from Wendy's this week. Mmm, I want a bacon double cheeseburger. It's well, obviously yeah, but Hasbro has to step up its game because they're about to lose about twenty percent of their sales because Toys R Us is going under. So that makes yeah, sense. Well, there is a there is a uh, GoFundMe out there, I think, or one of those. They're asking for eight hundred million dollars to see. <laughs> you know, people will do it too because they're so nostalgic. Well. One one guy wants to buy. He goes, I'm going to put in two hundred million dollars. You guys have to do <laughs> But uh, it's probably not going to work. But you know, Big Brother Canada. It's it, I've said this every season it's been on. It's the closest to our Big Brother, Big Brother US. Yeah. Uh, so if if you have means to watch it, I would say watch it. It's a nice. So you know, how would we find it if we're not? Through. Like online, as you bootleg it, is that what you do? If, I I will figure it out yourself. I, I will make no comment okay. on that. Um, but there are ways if you have the means. So let's talk about the challenge <laughs> okay. this week. So at the competition, Cam really screwed up her grenade. She really uh, misused it. So she gave extra time to a uh, car. They call it the time crunch. And Brad kind of realizes, wait, they could put us on the team where the people were screwing over. Uh, but the Troika you know, guaranteed them they wouldn't do that. So he tied, uh, Ky- quote, unquote, tied Kyle's feet, which basically kicked him out of the competition because it was a swimming competition, and you can't have your feet tied. So uh, Natalie, Zach, and Tony, the Troika, really just stacked the teams, and it wasn't even really fair. You had you know, Cara Maria with her with her time crunch. Kyle couldn't play because of the, the leg-binding thing. Leroy can't swim one, or other people on that team weren't really great swimmers. So the teams were really stacked, and of course, uh, the stack team won. And what do you, I, I didn't understand. So the, the competition was swimming out to like these floating balls Balls, swimming down and putting them in a bag that was eventually going to raise like a treasure chest or something. And the girls couldn't get down. I mean, a lot of the guys couldn't get down that far either. Uh, I mean, well, the balls I even float, tried swimming though. The... So it's hard if you can't, yeah, if you don't have the upper body strength to put the ball all the way down, like a few feet under. I, the water. I just remember, like, when I was in summer camp, we go to the pool. I could go to the deep end and swim down. Yeah, you but know, not 10, with the ball feet, whatever that the hell it was. Yeah, but it's it's like a wiffle ball. It's not that the bad. I don't big. know. But like Kayla couldn't do it. Car Maria couldn't do it. Um, they basically just gave up, and I can't say I blame them because it was just really, really ugly. Uh, it almost wasn't even fair. I think someone on the other team said it almost wasn't even fair uh, to watch this happen. Um, so after this all happened, the votes came down to it was a women's uh, a women's elimination game. It was tied between Kayla and Car Maria. And neither neither side would kind of change their votes, so the troika ended up picking and throwing Cam in, and Cam is just not. Well, why was good the troika all men if it was a women's elimination? You know, this is the problem well, that, with society and women is they don't step up and take leadership roles. Yeah, and this you can't blame the men on this. The women blew it big time. Uh, you it blew was it. four. It was, yeah, you had your chance and you blew <laughs> it. It was four three men to women. But Devin said he would have backed Jemmy, Natalie, well, and Nicole. He said that after the fact. If Let's he wanted to do it. Well, no, he said it, and then they acknowledged it after the fact. Um, but they they trusted the Troika not to throw them in. And you can never trust people not to screw you over, especially on a game like the Challenge. I mean, you have to assume you know, assume negative you intent, assume they're going to screw you Zach over. They're going to screw you over. Can we give a brief shout out to one of our good friends, Carla Ayala? Thank you for listening to the podcast okay. every week. We love you and your family. Rodrigo and Saint. Hola. Como estas? Where did that come from? Was there any, anything to do with Tony on that? You're like, yeah, Tony's the best. By the way, let's talk about Carla. Well, she listens every week and she messages me. And she's like, what happened to Dinkleman or whatever? You know, she'll say stuff. D- Dunkleman, Dunkleman, whatever the hell his name is. And she'll say things. And I'm just like, I love you. Thank you for listening. Uh. 
she says things. How dare she? So you know, Tony's getting a little too big for his britches. You know, I like that he grew a spine. I like that he's been playing better this this season, but now he's kind of getting a little full of he's himself. Like, I'll let my baby maybe, girl watch this season. Know. I'm like, chill out, dude. Yeah, you know, pride comes before the fall, <laughs> man. You better you better be careful. So uh, this new troika of all men picks Kayla Carmaria and or Carmaria if you're talking to Nelson, can't get her name right, <laughs> or Nat and Natalie. And eventually they picked Natalie, who they – it's really messed up. They assured her she would not go in if she didn't uh, go on to the Troika. This is why she should have pushed to be on the Troika. Uh, they screwed her over big time. And you know, I'm not a huge fan of Natalie this season, but I even felt bad for her. Yeah, I mean she should have seen that coming though. Let's be serious. I'm going to be Jesse. I don't want to be She serious. never had to no. once be in the – be up for elimination though. Well, she was protected by bananas, and then when bananas went, she went and tried to go to the other strong people. They even call, they called her out, not to her face, but behind the scenes, called her out uh, what she was doing. Uh, I mean, and this this challenge, this final challenge, whatever they call it, this season between Cam and Natalie was tailor made for yeah. Natalie. I mean, you basically you were on these little itty bitty tight ropes, you had to shimmy across or ring a bell, and Natalie's a former cheerleader. And She's gymnast. In pretty good shape. She's, yeah, you would have thought she had it, but Cam won. I mean, they ended up kind of flipping upside down and kind of pulling themselves across. But Natalie, I mean, I think she showed her an experience because when she kind of flipped over, she panicked and just couldn't go anywhere where Cam, I guess, kind of kept her cool and ended up coming back for a third time from the, from the third uh, from the third final challenge he was in. And I have to say, I, I, I have a lot of respect for Cam. I didn't really care one way or the other about her in the beginning of the season because I didn't know who she was. But she's showing I think she belongs here, at least uh, at this I, point. I agree with that. But I also don't want it to get be a situation where it happened, I think, two seasons ago where you had, like, Ashley in the final ended up winning. Just people who didn't really deserve to be there. But I think everyone kind of yeah. deserves to be there. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Uh, so then we thought the show was basically over, but TJ informs them that two people will be going home before they move to their next location, which generally means they're getting close to the end. Uh, so everybody had to run one mile, one mile up a hill, then zip line, run through a town, and then propel down a wall, and then run to the bottom. The slowest guy and the slowest girl automatically going to get kicked off, and the fastest boy and girl, or man and woman, if you want to put it that way, get $25,000. Uh, who think, do you think I is think the lose? guy. You think the guy, Britt? He, I don't honestly. I can't tell with all of their editing. Yeah, it's part hard. of me is worried it may be. Part of me is worried it may be Kayla, just really? from you know what I saw her do at the beginning of the season when you had to run up the Rock of Gibraltar. Um, a friend of mine's like, it's got to be, it's got to be Jemmy, right? But who the hell knows? I really just don't know. From the guy uh, side, it sounds like know. the Brit. From the girl side, I, I have no idea. Maybe Jemmy. Yeah. I'm worried. Jemmy. Oh, Jemmy. <laughs> I'm really worried that it's going to be Devin who beat Bananas and then would lose because he couldn't run fast really? enough. Yeah, it That's... did seem like it would be either him or the bread. I don't know. So we'll, we'll have to see. We're, we're coming close to the end here. Uh, but don't worry. I, I think they're filming a new season now. I mean, these, these seasons never really end. Know. I want to know, that, are they going to come back with another real world? Or have they just given up on their real world? It's been a while since since the last season. Really it's been over like a year. real world anymore. I guess they didn't get good ratings. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? Well, before we move on, I want to talk a little bit about, about our sponsors today. Uh, our first sponsor is Acosia. Now, Acosia is this awesome alternative to Google that you should all be using. I should be using it. Elaine, you should be using it. Everybody should be using it. It's an ethical way to browse the internet. Now, what does that mean? Acosia invests their profits to plant trees and regenerate deforested lands all over the world. How awesome is that? And here's how it works. You search the web using Ecosia, search ads generate revenue, and at least 80% of their surplus income goes to planting trees. Literally, all you have to do is what you're already doing, search the internet. And, <laughs> yeah, and over 2 million trees have already been planted, and with your help, Ecosia will reach 1 billion by 2020. And they've even created a special URL so our listeners can plant trees together. We can see who of our listeners or how many of our listeners are doing it. Go to ecosia.co slash torch. That's E-C-O-S-I-A dot C-O backslash T-O-R-C-H. You're already searching the internet. Why not plant a tree while you're at it? Awesome. This episode is also brought to you by the Super Friends podcast with Keith James. Now, Lane, 
I can only listen to our podcast so many times before I need to find something else to listen to. And I <laughs> finally have with this podcast. I really love it. It covers the NBA, Jackie Chan movies, and he even interviews people making an impact in the community. And here's the here's the kicker, Elaine. He covers The Bachelor, including all the spinoffs. And while we love reality TV, I think we'll both admit that The Bachelor talk on this podcast really isn't up to snuff. It's you know it's definitely. Be better. So if you're looking to talk about The Bachelor and all of its spinoffs, the Super Friends podcast is the place to go. Uh, the show's available on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and Google Play. The Super Friends podcast with Keith James. Check it out. So what do you think about uh, this Reiki teacher, Kelsey, on Vanderpump Rules? Do you think it's inappropriate? What is she inappropriate? doing? Or is just... are, you, are you effing kidding? Yeah, it's inappropriate. Inappropriate? In a probe probe. She's hugging him? Yeah, he literally was cleaning his house, told Brittany to leave so that this girl could come over and he can, fool, like, essentially, fool, they're fooling around. Just, they weren't touching. Well, no, they were touching. They just weren't. They had their clothes on. It was nothing, but, it, but of course, if there's nothing sexual about it, just doing, like, like if, if everything happened exactly why the way it happened. Why would you clean up? Why would but, you clean up the house? If you didn't know, like I clean my house before I have if guests. If you didn't like her, then you have nothing. Why are you, you have no one to impress? So just have her come over with that. But, but if everything happened exactly the same way, but it was like Sandoval, would you feel the same way? I, I think Jax's reputation is part of what's causing the problem. Yeah, I don't know I don't if think Kelsey's so. doing anything wrong. I mean, the the main problem is why that did Brittany Jax have to leave read the room? Well, it's kind of like a therapy. I understand that. His problem, though, is that he can't read the room when Brittany doesn't like when he's like, oh, you know, Brittany, it's the best day of my life whenever I see Kelsey. And, you know, that indicates yeah, it's not the best yeah. day of his life like, when he's with That's also I mean, kind of messed up. I don't think there's anything bad going on, but I think it's Jack's reputation also with Jack's not knowing how to, you know, talk to a human being to his girlfriend. I think that's what causes the problem. No, I think it's all inappropriate. I don't, what I find inappropriate is that I've watched this show for close to what, four or five, six seasons. I can't keep track. I don't think I've ever heard Jax talk about hockey once. Never. And the Have fact that heard? he's all no. in on this hockey, this dream job where he's going to be tweeting people, it just kind of is like, where did this come from? And is this really a dream job? And how long till he starts tweeting people to have sex with them and loses that job? And then he's yeah, back he's to not going to keep the job. We all know that. No. I mean, I know he's having this problem now that Tom and Tom are getting a job at Tom Tom and you know, being partial owners and they're moving on and he's feeling left behind. And I, I actually don't think him wanting this job and discussing it with Brittany is a problem. It's assuming that she'll just come along. That's or maybe he's assuming that she uh, won't. Is the way he breaks up with her maybe? Yeah, and it's like, well, I'm going. They're still together, by the way, if you look on like Twitter or Instagram or something. So, didn't so did he out. move to Florida? Uh, I don't believe so. Is he just he, doing it for he, attention he for the plot line? I mean, come on. He's on Vanderpump Rules. If he moved down to Tampa, you're not going to be on Vanderpump Rules anymore. Yeah, but didn't they? Um, they went to the whole, Kentucky for a few weeks. Well, yeah, well, yeah well, that was a known ending. You're going down there for a vacation. Like, Jackson Brittany fail in Florida. Is that going to be the name of the next spinoff? I just thought they moved to Florida a few years ago. Or he went back there for a I while. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they did. Who the hell knows? You know, again, we should probably be doing research. We'll find out more on this one. <laughs> uh, they all, though, did. They all did go to Mexico. They went to Playa del Carmen. That's where I went on vacation about two and a half years ago, or so. Or it was a year and a half ago. And I was hoping they were stay at the same hotel. I did, but sadly, they did you not. see? Did um, you see uh, Jax and Brittany when they're in their private pool and she, with, with their boobs just yeah, floating with, around? Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. With, <laughs> it, he wasn't touching her like somebody who wants to be with her. He was touching her like a friend. Well, there were cameras. I mean, you're not gonna like. I mean, well, it's Jax. Maybe he will just bang her on camera. Not bang her, but like the way he no. held her was like a, like he was holding a baby or something. I mean, she organized this trip to Mexico. It's his birthday. She's naked in a, yeah, in a pool you, in front of him, and she's like, him. like Kelsey is so great. Yeah, I got nothing. It's like from shut him. the hell up. It's like shut up and bang your girlfriend, man. <sighs> Couldn't agree more. Well, 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 James and uh, Peter are like, what's You're happening watching. up there, down there? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, I, I actually like Playa del Carmen a lot, although I think there's like some alert going on because a ferry from Cozumel to Playa del Carmen blew up Wait, or something. Wait, are we still talking about your uh, vacation? Um, it was awesome. That's where I hung out with Willie Nelson's granddaughter. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. It's from Austin. And 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 Rattlesnake Annie, who apparently is the Willie Nelson of Japan. We need to know. move down here. <laughs> no, you got to move up here, man. Uh, so what do you think of this fight that Lala and Stasi got into with Jax? Whether they're right or wrong, do you think it's yeah, their, I do. their place to start of course, these fights? Because no one else is going to say it. Everyone's just going to. I just watched the. Sh 
I just watch the show and go, God, why do these people hang out? They all hate each other. They're all you know, scumbags. Everyone, they all well, gossip behind each other's backs. Jacks. I think that's the kind of common denominator there. Women just don't respect him. Yeah, I mean, you have your ex-girlfriend, Stassi. You have the girl you cheated on, Stassi, with Kristen, who, by the way, they're rooming on vacation. In a real world, why would you ever invite either of them on this You vacation? wouldn't. And why are they trying to make up fabricated drama between Stassi and Kristen? We know they're friends. Yeah, like, oh, they're like, oh, I hate She's you. like, you don't let me sleep. You're yeah. like a sleep She's Nazi or something. Yeah. fabricated drama. I actually really like that James was excited to be there and be included, the, the white Kanye. He's, he's been on his best – I mean, if you watch what happened during that fight, he just kind of sat there and he tried to defend Jax a little bit, but he mostly just shut up, which I guess he must have been not been drinking. No, you're uh, wrong. Shut your drunk ball. James – well, a drunk James would have been like, you're wrong, bloody wrong mates, <laughs> however they say. So uh, they finally aired the second episode of Winter Break, Hunter Mountain on MTV2 on, set on Friday night. How do you night. not love this show, by the way? Like, why were they changed the time on this and day and everything? I think they I think they screwed the rollout of it. They screwed up when they you – know, if they put it directly after the challenge as opposed to after uh, – superfluous after show at that point that didn't need to be Lame. there. I think people would have stuck around, but I think they screwed it all up. But I think we have to be nice to the people on the show because I'm pretty sure they're all listening to this. Uh, they've been tweeting us and stuff. Uh, Sally Ann Salisano, uh, she tweeted us and been retweeting us a lot all the time. She's behind Jersey Shore, Florida Shore, uh, Party Down South, and of course Hunter Mountain, a whole bunch of stuff. This show's great. And she retweeted us. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun, and it really kind of breaks my heart that there's not going to be another season. And by the way, you can hear me losing my voice. Sorry, little allergies are stuck kicking my butt. Me too. So if I sound a little weird this episode, that's why. All right. So this last episode, Jillian was snowboarding, Phil broke her arm. And, you know, I'm not a fan of snowboarding or skiing, but if you're going to be doing active activities, man, and you break your arm, that just ruins your entire vacation. It's like it's like back in the days when you couldn't go in the pool with a cast and you break your arm. Up, oh, summer's over. I can't do anything. <laughs> summer's it's, it's over, just, like, in like, May. You know, winter's over. What are you going to do? You can't well, it could ski. Be your It'll be see how it goes. I mean, it could, could be your head. Could have a, you know, she could have gotten her noggin a flogging, and, and that's it not good. It could always be worse. I was a little critical on... on Twitter about the people on the show and again if you're listening I do apologize I, I point out how so many of the people on the show are smoking and I'm like do you know what what network you're on MTV every other commercial is about They're how you smoking. shouldn't smoke yeah. why are they airing that I mean it, it gets so annoying to me that I want to start smoking just to go against MTV because I'm like I get it it's 2018 nobody smokes Unless you're on Hunter Mountain winter break or winter break Hunter Mountain you need to remember at that age um, there's like there's a little window where you're you're still kind of smoking on and off. You do it when it's cool, but then you kind of grow out of it. I smoke cigars for a little bit in my 20s, although it's been a while now. <laughs> I still have a Cuban cigar I have to get to. My, my parents are going to Cuba in, a, in like That's six awesome. months. I'm like, bring me back as many cigars How as you can. How are they getting there? Taking a cruise, man. Okay. It's legal now. Well, yeah, the cruise, but you can't, still can't fly there direct. No, they're, they're, they're going down to Miami, staying in Miami for a couple of days, taking a, a cruise and then taking – it's like a – you know, there's a – they're not just like walking around by themselves. They're taking kind of yeah. a tour group around there for a couple of days and then coming back. And, and that's in addition to them in just a couple of weeks going to – I think they're flying out to L.A. or no, flying out to San Francisco, driving all the way up – to Alaska or to no driving up to Seattle, going to Vancouver, then taking a cruise from Vancouver up to Alaska. I'm like, Great God, to be you guys retired. are spending all of my inheritance. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Well, who do you think has to take care of their cats when they're gone? They'll be gone for like a month, and I gotta keep going down forty minutes to feed their cats. They're gonna be gone week. for a it's, month. It's too much. Well, if, if you add the trip, all the trips together they're taking, Jeez. it adds up. So, you know, Elaine, we've done stupid things in our youth. We do stupid things now. Uh, but one of the stupid things I've never done was play sting pong. It's basically you would stand there with your with your bare back, and I would just take a ball, out of the pad, you know, a ping pong ball on a paddle, and just <laughs> hit it at your back as hard as I can. Wait, I don't get it. The paddle or the actual ping pong ball? About whipping a paddle at your head, it's it's basically like hitting a ball against the wall, except for your back is the wall. Yeah, but the ping pong balls don't hurt. They're like little baby whipple well, balls. Ne next time I see you, Elaine, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna whip All a ball right, at your back it. and see how it feels, man. I I, I don't get it. Um, <laughs> I mean, the main part of this episode, the main thing of this episode, I'm just picturing was really the Alessandra. My shirt off and you like. You, you, you're going to put your shirt like pulled over your head and yeah. running around like Cornholio and I can't see what's happening. I'm getting beaned with balls left and right. I love it. 
Uh, so the main fight, the main storyline in this episode was really this fight between Al- uh, Alessandra and Jay Brew. <laughs> Jay Brew, they got into a fight. So he's annoyed that her mom keeps calling the police, which, you know, to be fair, is but annoying. Would they really right? have the police come up if it wasn't production planting them? I'm pretty sure the MT- if the, the police would go to MTV and then MTV lets yeah. them in or whatever. I mean, it's a misuse of, of resources Clearly. and stuff. So I, so I give him that. And he's also annoyed that she's not a good skier, not a good snowboarder, well, which is like, hey, Jay, but you realize, calm, you realize roll, they're the only two people in the house not hooking up with each other. Well, I, I think – I can't keep track of who's hooking up with who when it comes to the pre- – by the way, they put ranch dressing – you in, love in, that. In, oh, that's disgusting. Ranch dressing in. Uh, you know, I moisturize my face and keep it <laughs> with, with ranch. Young. Yeah, if I saw ranch, I'd be disgusting. Blue so, Jaber gets hammered. He's kind of being a dick. Sorry, Jaber, if you're listening, but you were being kind of a dick. <laughs> uh, you know, he just keeps going on saying, you know, I speak my mind. And she's like, I speak my mind too, but I'm not an I'm not an a hole about it. So at one point. She says – she's talking trash about him and goes, you know, he looks like a toe. <laughs> he looks like a which toe. I, That's so mean and yeah. just really random. Eh, but, but but you know she she believes it because it's you know, pretty specific. You know, calling someone an a-hole or whatever, that's one thing. Saying you look like a toe, picking a body. You know, if I was like Elaine, you look like my sphincter. You know, you, you look like a sphincter. <laughs> so I then posted on Twitter a picture of a smiley face on a toe and everybody under the sun retweeted it. Um, you know, it just shows how is that bullying? Is, no, come on. No, you know. it's bullying. I've never said I wasn't a bully. You know? <laughs> Melania, Melania Trump is working on the anti-bullying she legislation. She should start at home, or, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of that, by the way, I just listened in the end. I know you haven't seen it. We just talked about it quick. So on Showtime, there's this new show. It's about well, it's a new show. It's been on for a couple months now, called Our Cartoon President, and it's like a, a cartoon sitcom about the White House, and. Everybody on the show looks – they look both bizarre but exactly like their counterparts at the same point. Their voices respond. I mean I, I work in politics, so it's uh, good to me. I, I would say just watch it if you you know if you think what's happening in D.C. is r- ridiculous at all. All right. Uh, I think it's a funny show. So, of course, we all so. think what's happening in D.C. is ridiculous, but – and I'm sure we have some listeners who, who you know, are Trump supporters, and I'm not bashing you at all. Of course you uh, are. Bash and go listen. If, if you want to hear me bash, go to Grab Them by the Pod, the other podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it's, uh, we, we love people of all political persuasions on this podcast because, I mean, look, we, we cover Party Down South. We cover Jersey Shore. That's the Northeast and the Deep South. Uh, Florida Bama Shore, that's down south, man. It's on the Panhandle. The West Coast show again. So, uh, what West Coast show was there? They should bring back the Surreal Life on, on VH1. Did you ever watch that? Love like, that. Oh, hey, it's uh, it's just Vanilla Ice and one of the Bradys, and they put them in that a house. The, and they that was the best. Crap. No, no, no. The um, Apres Ski wasn't that up Upper Northwest? No, not Apres Ski. It was a Hunter, Hunter Creek Lodge or whatever. Where the it was it was the heir apparent to Apres Ski failed, and then they had. Uh, the, God, I forgot what it was. Hunter Creek Lodge, something Hunter, like that. Something yeah, Creek Lodge. I know what you're talking yeah. about. Sorry, guys. We know we we know you love you. We, Louise, she's our home girl up there. I saw her tweet the other day, and she didn't mention the show, but she's still working at the lodge. So. Nice. It's good for them. Yeah, I don't know. So if, if you're listening to our podcast for the first time today, and you actually made it this far, you realize that we should probably put a lot <laughs> time more time uh, and effort, effort into, into research, researching some of our things. Sorry, sure, we, we we know stuff, but uh, we kind you know, of know a little bit brains, about everything. My brain's getting older by the day. I can't retain information like I used to. I don't remember the things I used to. It's getting kind of sad, man. I will say I'm very proud of us for making it to nearly three and a half years. How many episodes have we done of this? I Love. think this is like episode 257, 257. maybe. 257, wow. 258, yeah. I have to go back and look. I've forgotten already. But yeah, it's up there. Um, God, I can't believe I've spoken to you this much over yeah. the past three and a half years. Yeah, tell me about it. Maybe that's why I'm losing my voice. I, my voice is running away from you. It doesn't want to talk to you. <laughs> all right, that's enough for today. Elaine, uh, tell all of our listeners to go to our website at bringmeyourtorch.com. And Elaine, where can they find us online? Facebook.com slash bringmeyourtorch or twitter.com slash bringmeyourtorch without the H. Oh, and by the way, no last H? night I watched Social Network for the first time. Jesus Christ. What is that, like a seven six, seven-year-old movie? Yeah, 2011. It was great. You're like, Jesse, have you heard about this thing called the Facebook? <laughs> you got to get on it. I love it. The the Winklevoss, what is it? Winklevoss twins. The you Winklevoss love them, twins. don't you? Yeah, Arby Hammer. Yeah. 
Well, I'm yeah, they're, they're great. Um, <laughs> I'm actually tomorrow going to be binging on a Netflix show, season two of Santa Clarita Diet. It's with uh, Drew Barrymore and Timothy Oliphant, where she becomes a zombie but lives in like Southern California uh, suburbia and you know tries not to eat people. It's it's pretty fun. The first season was pretty Sounds good. Sounds pretty funny. All right, we, we were trying to get out of here. Then sorry, we started talking sorry. again. Uh, remember all of our wonderful, beautiful listeners that you may have come here as a stranger, but you're leaving as a friend. We'll see you next time on Bring Me Your Torch. Bye.